the computer. Okay, terrific. Hello, everybody. How are you? Like me with my earphones? I just thought I'd wear these today. They came with uh, the uh, the uh, board that I bought. And uh, I figured I'd get the earphones. And actually, they sound great. I mean, I can really hear my voice in them and everything like that. But it's kind of clunky to wear them on the show because we're physical here, right? You know, and you can see me. And uh, you can, uh, these, are, these are big, fat things. But the thing is, I got good cushioning in here. And it seals the ear. And I can actually hear how my voice sounds. And it sounds okay. It sounds like it's doing fine. I, I balanced everything on this board. Things should work perfectly today. Uh, the only problem that I have is I have a thing called a noise gate that you can't hear the air conditioner because the noise gate lets it go down. If I kind of silence my voice, you can hear it more. But uh, basically, it, it's working okay. So anyway... Boy, do we have a ton of people waiting. My God, they're all here. The only one missing is, oh, Marjorie's even there. Right. She's there, too. There's Mandy O'Brien. Welcome back to Mandy. And welcome back to Marjorie. And welcome back to John Ewing. And hello to Andrew Deutsch and Len LaFrisco and Francine Witt and John Ewing. Yeah. And uh, Mandy is, I think, still trying to connect her audio. And ladies and gentlemen, the voice that launched a thousand ships, uh, Edward Berger. That's right. <laughs> Do that again. Say that again. Watch. All right. That's right. <laughs> which you one should of be us, able to do? Which one of us did that? <laughs> you should be able to do something uh, with his voice there on your new whiz bang audio thing. Huh? <laughs> eh, I could, but I'm not going to. Ah. It's already it's already perfect. That's right. On a hot day, those earphones could get really hot. Look who's here. Mandy is here, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Mandy. She's at work. She's yeah. doing her job to make a living. That's right. Gotta make a as they say, eke out a living. She seems to enjoy you enjoy that job though, don't you? You've been there quite a while. And you yeah. always you know, except when there are days on in a job like that where there's a crush going on, right? Yes. And you got to get stuff done. And it's just, you know, but uh, you seem to have been very happy with that job. Yeah. Yes, I love, I love this company. They're great. Yeah. Isn't that nice? Yeah. If only a lot of people could say the same thing about the companies they work for. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, one would hope that they would then look for something else, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. How was your weekend? It was good. It was, was good. Yeah. Hot. Can't really go outside. It's hot. like a hub. How hot is it? Uh, we only have, what, nine people here today? What? Where's everybody? Anyway, I, I don't care. That's, it's a nice crowd anyway. Um, always. Always. Uh, and we have some people here. I've been on, here in the last couple of weeks, like John Ewing and Mandy and um we of course have andrew deutsch how you doing andrew doing good just get ready for my press conference <laughs> oh okay good <laughs> good uh francine how was your weekend good it was good i went to a poetry festival on governor's island yesterday oh really yeah they uh governor's island is like an island about eight miles off of manhattan uh, yeah. like the southern tip you know and um it for like every year they have a weekend, like both days with just poets, re like half hour, you know, um, groups of, of people reading like like 100 poets each day, I guess. And like I they have a book fair. So it's kind of nice, but it was so hot. It was just. Well, there we go. There we it go. It was unbearable. I couldn't I'm really hot. stay. <laughs> Marjorie, how was it this weekend? Did we do anything? It was so hot. How hot was it? It was so hot, I saw a squirrel putting lotion on his nuts. <laughs> huh? I, I don't have a graphic for that one. You don't have a graphic for that. <laughs> Darlene, how hot was it where you are? It was 90s. 90s. Yeah. Yeah. Right now it is 91, and they say at 5 o'clock it's going to be 94 degrees for us here. Wow. It's five. Huh? That's why that's why Francine is out in the park right now. No. 
<laughs> not real. <laughs> it was all the, and all the leaves just fell off. Yeah, and it's I, autumn out in the park, you know, so it's very right. cool. Out in, out right. in the park. Actually, the best place to be would be out in the park today. No, okay. it's hot. Well, grass, though, absorbs heat where you, when it's you're hot, out of the paint, out, and all it does is radiate. <laughs> oh, radiate. Oh, by the way, air conditioner. Notice something about Marjorie? Yes. Yeah, the hair. Mm -hmm. She got a hair? Yeah. Hair. Hair. Oh, hair. Very nice. Cut. Isn't that a beautiful wow. haircut? It's beautiful. I adore yeah. it. I really beautiful. do. She came home and I went, you, you look crazy. And then I had sex with her like crazy when I saw her that way. Yeah. Your Damn. cuts will do it. Huh? Do it. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, and I'm still trying to grow back my beard, so I'm just going to do the whole face and then trim it. So that'll make Marjorie mad. That's why I'm doing it. That, that's supposedly why David Letterman grew his beard was to piss off his kid and his wife. <laughs> yeah, because women hate beards like that, don't you? Am I wrong? <laughs> Women, I hate beards like I that. Hate them. I hate them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, disgusting, and they're would, scratchy. Would that, be, would that be the um the uh what can we call it the uh, uh deal breaker? If you met up with a guy and he seemed like a really nice guy, great sense of humor, you know, uh, have lots of money, uh, so and you could couldn't get close to his face. So what's the and, point? And. and and, yeah. was, and he was just a great guy, but he had this beard. Would you still go out with him? No. no. You know, okay. Alex, I, it'd be a deal breaker for me if a woman showed up with a beard like that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's, um, but God, it's been, you know, we had a lot of people die in the last couple of days. Yeah. Oh my God. Richard yeah, Simmons, had, Dr. Uh, Ruth. Right. Do uh, Dr. Ruth, who I'm yeah. sad about because I like she, that. She was yeah. at 96. Well, the thing, there's a coincidence because she was back in her days in Israel before she became Dr. Ruth, she was a sharpshooter for the Israeli military and yeah. she happened to die on the day that uh, there was a little uh, sniper thing going on and I'm wondering if that was a disguise. Yeah, well, the thing is, she uh, she was a uh, not just a sniper. She was a uh, what do you call it? Uh, one of the guys that sits up on the roof and kills people. A sniper, yeah, sharpshooter. Yeah. Yeah, sharpshooter. Uh, sh I think there's another term for it. Uh, sniper. Yeah. Sniper. She yeah. was a sniper, and uh, you can't imagine that out of Doctor Ruth. But come on, you know, when she was younger, she probably was pretty feisty. She's pretty feisty when she was older. She was a hard oh, target for the enemy. She was so small they couldn't. They couldn't I did it. Yeah documentary about her like when there was a documentary i think it was on hbo or maybe netflix i don't remember one but i don't know was... yeah it's pretty good what were you saying mandy we didn't get catch it i just said the documentary that they had on her was really good it yeah wasn't... you remember where it was um on netflix i'm, I'm or... trying to remember if it was uh mm. Netflix or HBO, maybe. Nickelodeon. Just type in Dr. Ruth and it'll show all the things that, you know. Yeah. I, that, think, you know. That, I think that was her documentary. Yeah. Well, don't worry about it. I'll find it. I'll find it. But she was, uh, my memory of Dr. Ruth is she did my show when I was in New York. And um, she was uh, terrific. I mean, but I remember the thing I remember most, most is she was sitting in a chair, much like the one I have here, and her feet were not touching the floor. <laughs> I mean, it was 2019. I can't believe it was that long ago. I feel like I just watched it. Yeah. But uh, she was, uh, you know, she was a feisty little lady. I liked her a lot. She was just a nice person. And then we had Richard Simmons. Yeah. Another guy I had on my show in San Francisco, he showed up on a winter's day wearing shorts. I don't understand that, but he, I guess he didn't want to ruin his image, you know? And he came in wearing, I said, why are you wearing the shorts? He said, I always wear the shorts, <laughs> you know? And I remember I made him gasp when I said that uh, I had a philosophy of life that if you don't use your body, it won't wear out. <laughs> <laughs> And he he literally turned green. He he that he didn't. He thought I was for real. He didn't think I was telling a joke. 
And guess what, Alex? You won. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. I'm, I even am older than he was. That's right. So, uh, and who else? Uh, who else died? We oh, uh, Shannon Doherty. I don't right. care. Huh? Right, I was going to mention her. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 was, uh, I, I hardly ever saw any of her stuff. You know, she was famous for one show, and that's it. You know, actually, two, two. She's on that yeah. witch show. What that I didn't watch. <laughs> but Charmed. It was like, Charmed. Charmed. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. another show. Okay. Yeah. Well, there was two shows I didn't watch. And then she had a <laughs> show where she would break up with people for other people. <laughs> She would she did. like she would have a couple come on and let's say the guy was going to break up. He she would be the deliverer of the breakup news. Oh, the bad oh. news. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, what's well, interesting, they were both sitting there. You know, what's what's interesting interesting about Shane Doherty is that Luke Perry died a few years ago. Yeah. And they were the love interest on 90210. And it's so yeah. strange how both of them died so young. Yeah. 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 Well, you know. Maybe there was something in their spit. I don't the know. Guy, the guy from Hill Street Blues died too. Sicking or seeking, something like mm-hmm. that. The one who was the yeah. chief. What was his name? Uh, sicking, seeking. I forget. Sicking. Yeah, I never knew how to pronounce that name. Oh, him? He, he, play, he played he Lieutenant was, Hunter. Well, he was on uh, He was on that Star Trek show. What Star yeah. Trek show was it? <laughs> uh, Star Trek uh, Deep Space Nine. And more, and more importantly, Doogie Howser, MD. Oh, really? <laughs> but he was, he was on, he was on that show, and uh, he did something else. I like. He was in that picture with, um, uh, with uh, George Clooney about uh, the Mid East. What uh, I'm trying to remember what the name of the picture was. It had a one one name title, but Argo. Huh? Argo? No, that was not Argo. That wasn't oh, Clooney. Sorry. That was Affleck. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Knock sorry. knock. And who, not the duck. Who's there? Argo. Argo who? Argo <laughs> fuck yourself. <laughs> anyway, um <laughs> knock knock. <laughs> there. Blonde. Blonde who? Argo fuck yourself. Anyway, um hello, Mike Chisholm. I'm not getting any laughs here today. <laughs> oh, you'll always have sympathy laughs from me at bare minimum, sir. Um, you, nice to see you all. I only have a few minutes. I've got a podcast. I've got to start here in a few minutes. Uh, but I had to come on today just to hear the the, the scuttlebutt of things. Uh, have you already talked about uh, the incident in Pennsylvania? Have you already talked what, about what incident? What incident was that? <laughs> Perhaps our Canadian news up here isn't as uh, as sharp as it uh, <laughs> as it could be. The Have you already day, talked about it? Somebody referred to it as what? No, I, but it's not a political show, Mike. Right. And right. It's, it, some somebody on on um, MSNBC referred to it as a tragedy, and um, I uh, I had to think for a moment why is it a tragedy and then i came up with an answer because he missed yeah right. <laughs> wow well i i heard i heard from a good source that at the big republican dinner they took duck off the menu because it's just too soon <laughs> oh, no <laughs> duck. wow yeah well i have my theory <laughs> that whole thing but i don't want to get into them here we don't do politics on this show but um, but if you want politics, he just picked the worst of the worst of the guy who politics. lied about the hillbilly, oh, yeah. hillbilly yeah. elegy, J.D. Vance. Yeah. All Ohio right. This is, so, this is so interesting. Like, I didn't, I didn't oh, view well, this as politics. politics. What the oh, heck? It's all well, over. no, I, I didn't view this as politics when I brought it up. Yeah. To me, it's like a world event. Like, like in Mexico's elections last season, I think thirty something people were killed in that election cycle. <laughs> Uh, the la- in Mexico, and it's just that was weird. a good election cycle down there. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I, it's just weird seeing this happen. It's weird seeing this happen. I mean, well, let's, to me, let's that move on happen. with some thoughts and prayers because that's usually what happens when uh, there's there's a silly shooting. Right. Empty <laughs> thoughts and empty prayers, and uh, that's it. <laughs> By the way, can I ask you a question, Mike? Sure. Where did you get that DX seventy seven? 
Um, I got this from the guy who stole David Letterman's microphone. He gave it to me. Is that so there's a whole thing true? about but if Dave had his mic stolen. That guy Dave gave it didn't to have me. that mic on the um, CBS show. He had it on the NBC show. And he had it for a couple of years on the CBS oh, really? show, and then it was stolen. And uh, the guy who stole it, it's a whole thing. And you got it. it. So te- in in fact, you're now the guy who stole it. This <laughs> wasn't Dave's. No, the guy who stole Dave's microphone has it sitting on his desk. It's the last microphone Johnny Carson ever really uh, used. It was an old Jack Parr. Like, I used the- those for years at radio yeah. stations. They were the standard for, uh, for, for a radio station. There was another one called the DX44, yep. which was kind of like the fluted. It had a, a, yeah. a, 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 I can't describe it exactly. Kind of a pyramid look. I don't know. Yeah, almost like a diamond or a, yeah, whatever. It's an angular, those, yeah, those, an those angular were thing. standard in yep. almost every radio station I ever worked in in the early years. Yep. In later yep. years, they replaced some of the electro voices and so on. But that mic, to this day, I bet if you plug it in, you probably have. Yeah, it works, it works great. To it, it works great. It's a, absolutely it great sound to it. You know. Uh, the, that Jay, was the one you cupped your ha- ear to hand to your ear to and talked into. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. No, that's yeah. So yeah, great, anyway, great I love model. I love this thing. It's fantastic. Wait, so, so, you, so you got it from that guy? He had that sitting around. Yeah, he gave it to me. Yeah, I wish I could find one of those. I would use those instead of this. And this yeah. is Mike. You can all he uses he uses Dave's for his podcast. He uses it on his desk. He's got Dave's desk too. And and Dave. oddly enough, Dave's mic probably didn't even work. It wasn't plugged in. He had a <laughs> lavalier. That mic was there just for looks. I don't know about that. I think no, he did I'm, have I'm, it on because when you'd hit it with the pencil, it would make its it would do its thing. Oh, no, you would hear the tap, but the tap was being picked up by it the was lab. by the lab. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, he gave me uh he gave me uh this. He gave me an original Letterman jacket that belonged to um um to Rich Hall. And uh he gave me a, a an Annie Leibowitz picture of <laughs> Dave did, signed by did Dave. Did he steal this stuff? He didn't steal the other things, he stole Dave's microphone. Uh, but the, the desk came from How a you museum. Get Dave's of- microphone. He's you go look over there and then you grab it and run. <laughs> oh, it's a whole story. I used to talk about it with uh, with Shecky a little bit. Um, no, it was in '96 when they were changing the set in the Ed yeah. Sullivan Theater from the first time. Um, yeah. he got in there in between. So when they went to the bridges, so that's one of the bridges there. When they went to the bridges set, uh Jay got in there. He was 18, 19 years old. It was a mistake he made. Um, but he got into the Ed Sullivan Theater at night. The cleaning crew let him in, and he went and messed around in 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 the theater. And then he went downstairs, opened a door, saw Dave's mic sitting there because they would remove it every day. And uh, and he lifted oh, it like you wouldn't steal it. <laughs> you know? A lot of character. So, so how did he come up with another one of those mics? Um, Jay, Jay was a huge and still is a huge fan of the show, including like Kathleen anchors who did the set and all of that stuff, the technical stuff. Yeah. He worked in television for years. He worked for Conan. He worked for, uh, different places. We moved out, uh, out, out, out West. So he already had one. He had a talk show at his high school in Connecticut and he already had not this one, but he had another DX 77 and, um, and he just would tinker with them people would uh would give them to him because they knew he liked that stuff yeah. and so this is one that he had in his office when he worked for david e kelly for a long Marjorie, time you want to buy me a birthday present buy me a dx 77 i would love that and yeah, do you have the original stand for it too there uh no the i don't know stand. if that's no, but that i don't know if that's original of, or if it's just a. that's the kind of stand it would be on it did but, say it does say rca on the bottom of it so yeah, it does say RCA on the bottom, and that's it. Your- does so, yeah, yeah. So yeah. It might be, uh, it might be the. I don't think it's the original, but I think it's an original. And I think that mic. Usually, we had one sitting on a you know a boom, uh, and th- that's how we used it. And uh, we used them, the original station I was in used the DX forty fours in the other studio where we had like four mics set up. So people had to have a discussion on the air or whatever, but th- that that's the mic I grew up with, you know, the re- reverb sells them for 
anywhere from two thousand to three thousand dollars, depending. I just looked it up. I'm buying one. I want one. Go on Re- Reverb uh, or Vintage King. They, they What's have- it called? Reverb. Reverb or Vintage King. Those are two sites, you, reliable sites to buy that kind of thing. Would you be mad at me, Marjorie, if I bought one of those mics? Go help yourself. <laughs> well, I'm we not got- sure what you would need to as an amplifier yeah. to adapt it to your soundboard, but it should work. No, they 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 plug in just fine. It's if, they, if they have an XLR, yep, they're good to go. Yep. Oh, okay. And they didn't need phantom power either. <laughs> but wasn't uh, that a superhero in one of those crappy movies that Chisholm watches? Phantom Power. Yeah. How does my voice, now? How does my voice sound today? Manly really good. The mic sound good. I did all this. I finally learned how to adjust this thing so I get pretty good sound. You know. Overall, you sound great lately. What? Who said yeah. that? John Ewing. Oh. I said overall, it's been a large improvement how you come across, in my opinion. Yo, and really? by the way, I want to recommend Horizon as a viewing opportunity with Kevin Costner, if you don't mind. Really? Oh, That's is it good? I haven't seen it yet. business. Pardon me? Yeah, I know. They they panned it. I think it's really well done. It's three hours and 15 minutes. Uh, uh, Marjorie, I know, but it's Marjorie a great story. Two hours and that's it. What's that? That's a long time. It is. A long but time to Kevin Costner. By the way, is anybody here watching House of Dragons? I haven't started. I, I got it safe to watch. I was waiting yeah. for a bunch of episodes first. Yeah. Every too. episode is over one hour long. And last night it was one hour and 15 minutes and nothing happened for the whole hour and 15 minutes. Did you watch it at all? Uh, you're nodding, uh, Mr. Canada. No, we're, uh, th- that's the thing that Candy and I were talking about with the bear. <laughs> it's fun with the streaming, with the streaming shows where they, where they, you know, one show might be 48 minutes and one show might be 18 minutes and one show might be, you know, an hour and 10 minutes. And it's just, it's interesting watching them take the constraints off of. I like it when shows do that because what they're doing is they're timing it out to what they need it to be in order to tell what they have to tell. And so it's nice when you see a show is only going to, I mean, basically the bear is a half hour show. Basically. Sometimes it goes 44 minutes and sometimes it goes less than a half hour. Yep. But I mean, uh, uh, what is it dragons is like i don't know i mean except for the last episode was pretty good during the last 15 minutes when they had these three dragons fighting each other but then the rest of it's a real talky show mainly because it's a cheap way of doing it and they're constantly talking back and forth to each other and nothing happens. It was really, last night was so boring. I felt like I wanted that part of my life back. <laughs> you know, and at my, t- at my age, you don't want to spend that much time on a show that isn't any good. <laughs> God knows Marjorie does. I got her Brit box. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, Has anybody like here Brit watched box? If yet? You, you like Brit box, don't you, Marjorie? You really like Love it. it. Yeah, you love it. Yet she watches shows. They got a show like on CBS, like Criminal Minds, okay, a procedural. And it's the same as these shows she's watching, but because they've got British accents, she thinks it's really good and would never watch Criminal Minds. I know it's really good. It sounds I mean, better. Watch good, a good show. I, like I have the same watch conversation. Watch CSI. What? Same conversation with my wife who watches BritBox. Same, she won't watch, she, oh, you watch too many violent shows. Every show she watches is a murder mystery. And it's always got oh, one it's different. They're British, so I guess it doesn't matter if the British get killed. It's also a, a procedural about a defective cop. You know, they're all defective. So I don't know. I'm, I'm like, you know. But Marjorie loves it, so I have it for her. And I'm, I'm delighted that you can have good time with uh, BritBox. I do. Okay. And um, let me see here. What? What? So did anybody do anything in all this heat? How hot is it where you are? Did I ask you, um, um, uh, 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 Andrew? How yeah, hot? It's, uh, let me, let me check the, let me check the weather report. Hold on. 
Oops, something went wrong. Shit. <laughs> it um there we go. <laughs> there we it was go. it was in the upper 80s. Really? Yeah. And how about where you are, Len? You're out there in you're on the other side of San Francisco. You're out there in the valley. Yeah, it was 109 and last week. How much? It was 109 last week, but now 109. It's like oh my god. That's why I never moved to Contra Costa. Yeah, well, we wouldn't have had you anyway, so. <laughs> and Len, you go out? No, I just went, I was in my pool, up to here with a cocktail. <laughs> you know how I look at this kind of weather, this hot weather? I look at it like it's a rainstorm outside. Oh, I would yeah. go out in a snowstorm, and I would never go out when it's this hot, you know? Yeah. I don't know. It's uh, it's lovely today. It's 77. Beautiful. Oh, wow. I don't know what happened. I've been as hot as like 126, 27, and as cold as 60 below. So this stuff in the middle is pretty good with me. Francine, right. what do you do to beat the heat? Oh, I just stay in. Just stay in. <laughs> I just stay in as much as I can. And and what was your electric bill this month? I don't, <laughs> I don't pay it. Mine starts with a five. Hey, so. My husband pays it. You're, oh, well, yeah, okay. You <laughs> still, you're still so, paying it. Come yeah. On. No, I don't. You know, but... I don't really like the air conditioner on that much. I like to just, but I'm inside, but I have the window open and I'm that fine. Doesn't, that doesn't do anything. So. It's been humid as hell. Yeah. We we live in the back part of this house. We use air conditioner in the in the guest in my room and our bedroom rather. We use the air conditioner in the studio here, and sometimes we leave the door open so the whole area back here gets cool. However. We do not, uh, uh, hold on, I just got to let somebody in here. Um, we don't ever, we don't have air conditioners in the front part of the apartment, uh, mainly because why? We never would use them. We're or, never there. We're never there, hardly. But we, you go out there, and it's like you walk into an oven, you know? So um, we're very happy to live back here. And this is almost a full apartment back here. So that's that's good. When we eat dinner, we have to, you know, we have obviously have to go into the kitchen. And uh, but it's, you know, it's been really hot. You just, as you say, you just try to stay indoors and beat the heat. You know, how hot is it down there, in Mandy? Do you know? Georgia would be seem to. I can't hear you. Well, your mic isn't on or something. How hot is it up there where you are? It's, I mean, it's like yesterday, it was like 97. 97. It's just very humid. So it's just, bleh. yeah. Well, we, we're really humid. And, and right now we're at, well, we're at 91. How about yeah, you? I mean, it's basically like New York, probably just the yeah. same. Chisholm, how is it up there? All weekend, it was about 100 Fahrenheit. Oh, God. Oh, God. Now, we is have a dry normal? heat. So is it's that not that bad? You guys during the. Yep. During the summer? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. We're in a valley, and we've got, like, water sports and water skiing and all hey, that. But you're stuff. northern. You should be cooler. No, well, not where we are. We're the Lake Tahoe. Where I live, it's like the Lake Tahoe of Canada. In the summer, it gets very hot. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So lots of beach stuff, lots of uh, lots of outdoor activities in the summertime. But it's a dry heat, though, so it doesn't hit us nearly as... <laughs> now, you're in Tiburon, John Ewing. I imagine it's pretty humid there. Hot. Yeah, like... Like Len said, I'm in Novato, and it was like 106 for like four or five 106? days. 106. <laughs> it, it was hot here, Oxford. It was over 100 for 10 days. Compare that. Yeah. To, compare that to San Francisco on the same day. What was it in the 60s in San Francisco? No, it was higher than that. Yeah, was I think they had 80s and 90s. Yeah, yeah. really. It was, it was very hot. very rare. That's very rare. Yeah. You know what's great about San Francisco, though? Nighttime comes, the fog rolls in, and it's like air conditioning. And that's what wasn't happening. Well, had, there was this high pressure, and it was pushing the fog out, so the evening stayed warm, too. Oh, geez, almighty. Yeah. Then yeah. things change, because I don't remember days like that in San Francisco. And you, you would get it's two or three days. warm days, and then it would the fog would cool it down. We had 10 days in a row. I've never seen that before. By yeah. the way, in case people just joined us, this is what a night nice show is all about. <laughs> talk about the weather. Right. You know, we talk about no the politics. 
What? <laughs> okay. A little bit of we do a little bit of politics. I mean, you, you can't avoid talking about politics these days. But not much, not much. But you know, I mean, I'm what I'm tired of is okay. So so Trump got shot, but he didn't get hurt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Some other people got killed. One person got killed. Two people got critically shot. But basically, by Monday, that story should not be a story anymore. Mm. You know, outside of how's he healing? You know, has he got a bandage on there? You know, um, but they don't. Right. Do that. They keep just hammering away at it and hammering away at it. And we had Paula here. Paula's not with us right now because she's basically in the air having left us this morning. And mm -hmm. and Paula said, I'm sick and tired of watching the news. I can't stand it. it and now great. the documents case has been dropped. Or yeah, but that's good. Because now they yeah. can appeal and get rid of the judge that's in his pocket. Yes. That's a good thing that that was no, the, it, conveniently it, the day before the Republican you, event. Thank you, Judgey Wudgey. You know, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you think it's any, any coincidence that 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 he he got hit by shrapnel from from a teleprompter, not a bullet, and <laughs> he he had a case drop the day before the Republican convention after he did his. What's I'm this? reaching for my Oscar fight fight bullshit. What's this? What's this, really, yeah. what's this thing it, about the teleprompter? What happened? The, he didn't get sh hit by a bullet. It had to have been shrapnel from the teleprompter. Uh, they showed it going past him, and I yeah, said, but you, you don't have a depth of field. Shrapnel. You you shrapnel. it went way past him because at that it's let's go back to the Zagruder film. If it was right there, it would not have hit the person that it, it hit in his so audience. You're thinking it hit the teleprompter and glass from the teleprompter. Yes. Hit. That's what I've heard too. And you're never going to know because there was no, the medical records are going to be sealed so that he could say he got hit. <laughs> a bullet like that, the ballistics of a bullet like that. I'm getting this from someone who's a Trump supporter. It's impossible that it just grazed his ear and didn't tear it completely <gasps> off. It's right. shrapnel. The way the three people were in the stands that got hit by the bullets. It, where the teleprompter was, it's much more likely it went through the teleprompter and hit those people. He did not get shot. Wow. He got cut. And, and and you know, if if the last time there was a shooting, he said to us, well, that's you have to get over it, up, so let's get over it. When he, that's that's right. when he got up and he was giving this thing, yeah. he didn't say anything <laughs> because he didn't have a teleprompter to read. Yeah. No, he was just going fight, fight, and he was like, oh, God, what a great photo opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, he got his Iwo Jima bullshit image. Yeah. Well, yeah, you he's, know, he's going for his Oscar the day okay. before the Republican convention. Again, this, this isn't politics, but I watched that video. And if you ever get a chance to watch it again, which you absolutely will, because they show it every five minutes. Seconds. Look at what the people are doing. Nothing. Yeah. One of them was giving the camera the, uh, the finger. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Another one was taking a, you know, a shot with his camera. Another one was waving, hi, mom. Yeah. And, they, and they, me, they're dying, and the, your your hero has just gotten hit by teleprompter. Wouldn't, wouldn't they be screaming? Well, let me let me yeah. ask you another question, Alex. Just just to get your opinion on this. So there were three shots fired from a guy on a roof, all within a period of about a second and a half, maybe five seconds. Yeah, and there was a guy in the stands who was killed by one of those three bullets. He's a victim of the bullet. He definitely was killed. It happened. They're now claiming that he was killed because he was trying to shield his family. How would he know he was trying to shield his family from the bullets in three seconds? He was shot. He was a victim. There was no heroics. Unfortunate, the guy, it's horrible that no, the guy died. I, I, he, but it's I, impossible I, that he was trying to protect his family getting in front of bullets because there wasn't enough time for a human. Well, you know, the bullets it, I, were coming. I, I'll tell you, the press eats this crap. Yeah, that's that's the point I'm getting. The governor of, uh, of, of Pennsylvania got on television and told this story about the guy. And they love to tell that story. They don't want to, you know, it's the old uh, uh, thing from uh, uh, the man who shot Liberty Valance. When you're going to publish uh, the truth or you're going to publish the the legend, publish the legend. Well, you know, you know the old riddle, the plane that landed and crashed right on the border of Romania and Hungary. I mean, it hit the ground from 30,000 feet direct into the ground. You know where they buried all of the, all the survivors? Where? <laughs> you don't bury survivors. You don't bury survivors. It's 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 yeah. a play on words. You bury you bury victims, you bury dead people, you don't bury survivors. But there's wow. a difference between a victim and a hero. There's nothing heroic about being in a building when it blows up unless you ran into that building to save lives. 
if you don't risk something personal, it's like they're consciously or unconsciously went to risk your own self to help somebody. You're not a hero, Mandy. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being a victim of a crime. No, I know. Bring me the. I'm I'm just kind of adding to this. Almost like they're just really trying to play off the whole, like it was a mass shooting, a school shooting, where the gunman was going through and he knew and he shielded his family. You're right. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, it literally was instant. Yeah. You know. he didn't even know what hit him. I'm sure. Yeah, I uh, that didn't make sense to me that he suddenly was shielding his family. He, he wasn't. He couldn't. His have. family. It would be after the gunshots, not be while they were going on. And CNN yeah. had a guy who was sitting next to the guy who got shot, who was talking to CNN early on mm-hmm. in all of this. Mm-hmm. And that person said, "I heard it, this thing whiz by, and it hit the back of the head of this guy that was next to me, and he just flopped over dead." Mm-hmm. He, that was what the first witness who who was there and saw it happen and was terrified by it. And then they come up with this BS that it was a, a her- heroic act. I'm sorry if heroes are, are great. Victims are important, too. There's and nothing- not, you're not here to make I'm him. I'm not shaming a victim. I'm he saying he was a hero. Yeah, but that's the way the news reports things. Yeah. You, you pr- report the legend, not the truth. And uh, it's uh, it's really it's it's kind of kind of sad, you know, but we had there was nothing, uh, you know, this happened. What on on Saturday did it? Mm-hmm. Was it Friday? Yeah. It was Friday. Well, can I just tell you all a story real quick? I was outside planting a tree that my friend had mailed to me as a gift. We were out there digging and I have elderly people that live next door to me. I mean, I'm talking these people are like 87, but they're Trumpers. I love them dearly, but they're skewed by the dude. Yeah. And <clears throat> when you this, I, I've actually, Johnny the, is the husband. He's come over to my house before to let me help him get his wife up off the ground because she's fallen. Yeah. Tiny lady, she's like this tall, 90 pounds. I just lift her. You know. How does she fall? <laughs> she's too close to the ground. Right. <laughs> you know. This has happened twice now, okay? He's basically just trotted over to my house, ding dong, you know. On Saturday, we were out there planting that tree, me and Henry. He is running across my yard. Trump's been shot. Trump's been shot. And I'm thinking, you're going to have a heart attack running across my yard for somebody that does not give a shit about you. (laughs) (laughs) I wanted to go down. Yeah. Hopefully, and, but when he's saying Trump's been shot, I immediately I'm so bad. I was like, oh my god. Yeah. Well, like, look, you know, I, I I know that that seems incredulous to you, but yeah. everything everything to me is incredulous these days. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, uh, again, we're not really talking politics here. We're talking about mass hysteria, mm-hmm. and and in the case of Donald Trump, I don't understand. You know, uh, when I was growing up, I was told when you go out and vote, make sure you vote for a person who doesn't rape a woman, doesn't cheat on his wife, doesn't, you know, uh, 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 steal money from the public, essentially. I mean, and and on and on. And I'm thinking, how do you ever become a nominee? I mean, at this point, they should say, we want somebody to have as much baggage. I mean, even what's his name? The guy in Texas. Who is he? Uh, uh, Abbott. Uh, uh, who? Well, not Abbott. Abbott. But I'm talking about this senator, uh, Cruz. Uh, you know, he's more moral than Donald Trump is. Why don't they pick him? Low bar. Yeah, the low bar. But, you know, all I'm saying is these are people that when I was growing up, if the rumor even came out that he'd been accused of rape, that was it for his candidacy. And today, well, who was the candidate that was out on a boat ride, while yeah, he was Ga- Gary, and had Gary, Hart. Hart. Gary Hart, yeah. yeah, yeah. Remember those things? It was like they sneezed wrong, and they no right. longer could run for like president. And Thomas Eagleton was depressed, and Dean moved the guy. <laughs> Governor from up north that just screamed at a rally and oh, like, Howard Dean. Oh, Howard Dean. Howard Dean and and I and I knew Howard Dean. He was like a friend of ours when I lived up there. Uh-huh. And he was the he was the most fair minded, 
rational person. That was just such a like a sound. I'll tell bite. you what happened. I'll tell you what happened because I know it because I'm in the business of sound. Uh, uh, years ago, when I was doing comedy on radio, and I would have these breakfast shows that we had an audience come in, and they would, of course, laugh at the comedians. I listened to the show the first time that we did one, and I said, "This comedian isn't getting any laughs," and I know he was. And it sounds like he's just talking into the mic. He doesn't sound good. And I suddenly realized because we hadn't mic'd the audience. So you go out and you mic the audience and all of a sudden you mix them in with the comedian. All of a sudden he sounds funny. Well, in that case, mm -hmm. they had him holding a mic, but the audience wasn't mic'd as well. And so when he started going, yeah, and, 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 and there was yeah. no reaction from the people, even though there was reaction from the audience. Mm -hmm. And he seemed like an idiot. Right. You take anybody, you strip away the audience. We take David Letterman. If we took a David Letterman show, removed all the audience in that show, it would seem like he was an idiot. Yeah, the Hurricane yeah. Sandy shows, which had no audience, were fascinating for that. They changed the whole tone. Yeah, I mean, Dave could sit there and tell a story to a camera and be just fine. But the fact is, he wasn't going to play it the same way as when an audience was there. But if that audience were there and you took that audience sound out of that mix, he would look like an idiot. So that's what happened to him. And I always felt it was grossly unfair. Uh, <laughs> Dean was not a bad guy. Yes, yeah, uh, yes, uh, Sorry. Mandy. Hear the thunder. Bottom's about to fall out here. Got to go. Got to bowl. Got to scoot. Got to go. Gotta go. Uh, we, okay. Go have a, you can do in your class, right? Yeah, have that's fun. fun. Have fun. Bye, y'all. Okay. Bye. Bye, y'all. <laughs> y'all. <laughs> no, it's a very encompassing term. I always loved y'all in yeah, Texas. Good. <clears throat> it, it just encompasses a, a whole thing. Y'all, you know. All of you. Anyway. Hello, Jeff. How are you? I'm good. And uh, I was out there and it was a beautiful day. And everybody says it's going to start raining. You went out there and you said it was a beautiful day. Is it humid up there? It was only 87 degrees. It's 87, but is it humid? No, it wasn't bad. But, you know, it's strange because we got a pool and you hang out by the pool, and the pool kind of cools things down. Yeah, well, that can cool you down, but, yeah, you know. But anyway. I but, uh, everybody got scared about rain and this and that, and so. No, I don't mind rain. Marjorie is always, is it going to rain? Is it going to rain? I better bring an umbrella. I don't even care if I have an umbrella. No. When it's this hot and it rains and you get soaked, then the rain stops, and five seconds later, you're dry. It yeah. feels good. There you go. Yeah. And it makes your hair good and curly. <laughs> the humidity. Uh, Len, did you do anything exciting? Did I ask you if you did anything exciting this weekend? You did not. No. And, and no, I didn't. <laughs> Just hung out with some friends, sat mm -hmm. in the pool, you know, uh, got some stuff going in the next couple of weeks. One of those movies that I did, um, there's a premiere on the 29th. So I'm looking forward to that. So what is the movie? Cool. It's called East Bay Confidential. It's I have a very small part in it, maybe 20 or 30, 40 seconds worth or whatever. But I play a, <laughs> I play a, an escort service owner, a, a greasy Italian, you know, which is the perfect typecast for me. Don't you mean um, a pimp? Yeah, pimp? All right. Yeah, I didn't want yeah, to say I, that. I think one. you've got a point there, a uh, pimp. <laughs> Don't you hate typecasting? Yeah, right, <laughs> right. So I'm looking forward to seeing it. It should be should be fun. So it's yeah. Monday, two weeks from today. So yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, congratulations. Yeah. I'll, I'll let you know. I'll let you know when it hits Amazon Prime. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we'd love to see you. You know. Uh, you, watch, you watched my first one, right? Uh, Death Blood Four. I, I no, I didn't. Never found it. Okay. Well, I'll send you a link. It's called Death What? De Death Blood Four. Death and blood. <laughs> wasn't death below <laughs> in uh, Seinfeld? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. I, I I don't know if I'll watch it because I never saw one, two, and three. So well, there is no one, two. There is no one, two, or three. That's part of the joke. Oh, that's part of the joke. Oh, okay. That's good. 
Guys, that, I hate to yeah. say this. I got a jet. I got a podcast. I got to do. But it was nice seeing you all. See you, Mike. Yeah, see see you all very also, much. you should. Uh, we should talk. I should have you come and do a little interview with me for the nighttime show. Anytime. You know. Just let me know, and we'll do it. Absolutely. That's uh, that, that's our good friend uh, uh, Mike Chisholm. Thank you, Mike, for being here. Peace and love, right. kids. I appreciate uh-huh. you all very much. Talk to you and soon. And the rest of you stick Bye. around. Uh, yeah, we'll stay, I guess. Yeah, give me 15 minutes. We're good. Okay. Oh, boy. Ah, I've had, I have tooth problems. Anyway. I've been Did taking you give her, ibuprofen get like. her a dentist? What? No, yeah. I, I went to the dentist about this once. It's like a front tooth here that gets very sensitive when I brush too hard or when I sleep on it. And he said, well, there's no cavity there. There's nothing there. It's a tooth. There we go. Tooth, tooth pushing on another tooth and causing it to be sensitive. And uh, if you brushed it too hard, that's a problem too. So I brushed it yesterday too hard and I have this problem again. So anti dentite. But the dentist said, <laughs> no, he said it's not a cavity. That's not what it is. So see, I've got all these crowded teeth down here. This one tooth, this kind of sticks out there. And um, I should have had it pulled years ago. And then have them do something to fill in the gap or whatever it might grow together. Uh, but now I'm too old to get any of that done, you know. Sure, pull it, put in a fake tooth in the front of it or something like that. And we'll be just fine um, and and brighten the whole thing up or put braces on. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to die with the braces, you know. So I just don't know if I want to have it fixed. So. Any uh, any movement on your vacation plans yet? You guys coming up with something? We keep talking about it. And we never do anything about well, it. So, so I just keep buying equipment for the studio. Fuck it. You know? uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do a European river cruise. I think next year. So really, I've been looking, on our list. yeah, I've been looking at them. They're, you know, they look- do those boats. Those like those Viking boats. That the yeah. the the uh, state rooms are really they're. Very Tight. small. Very <laughs> small. 135 square feet, which is pretty small. 135 <laughs> square feet? Yeah. Half this room. Right. Yeah. yeah. But I'm looking at them. They're not ridiculously priced. The airfare has been kind of high, so we'll do Viking it. Maybe has a very bad reputation. Who? You know, I, somebody else has said that. Maybe it was you last week or something. You, okay. heard, what happened was we had my, uh, my uh, leukemia doctor. And yeah. we were thinking of taking a vacation. So, you know, what if I am on vacation when my next appointment's happening? He said, then you just change the appointment. He said, no big deal. Anyway, he said, well, what do you think you're doing? We said, oh, Marjorie, he said, I'm thinking, take, we're thinking of taking one of those cruises on a river somewhere. And he said, whatever you do, don't take Viking. Mm-hmm. So, Stan, I've read nothing but good stuff about Viking, but yeah. she won't do Viking because my your uh, my uh, leukemia doctor. <laughs> you know? I just we talked to somebody this weekend that came back uh, three days ago from a Viking and they could not stop raving about it. So who knows, Saint Marjorie? Alex, there's a lot of small river boat cruises that are not. There, there is, there is. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure there are. But you know, uh, there's there's normally like five different companies yeah. right next to each other. And yeah. they all come at the same time to go out for dinner. <laughs> yep, I heard that they tie the yeah. boats together. Yeah, I that's right. That. Do you um, uh, uh, let me let me ask uh, um, uh, Edward Berger something? <laughs> uh, do you have any suggestions for where we should go on vacation? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you go anywhere on vacation? Oh yeah, no, I I go with my niece. We've been on cruises and things like that. We went to Paris. We went to Japan. You know, not wow. on a boat, but yeah. uh, which which one did you enjoy the most? You enjoyed Paris, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah Paris. I mean, we went to see uh, Jim Morrison's grave. Oh wow! Yeah. Really? Was he there? Yeah. Well, well, I don't know. I, I I think it was out, but. Uh, <laughs> we, would, we would have never found him, but we found some American guy who knew the whole cemetery and he knew where everything was. So he showed us a couple of graves. A couple of other people are buried there, too. Yeah, he, he, he just passed, I think. Yeah. Oh, that guy? Yeah, no, he's a 
whatever. Yeah. That's where I want to be buried, Marjorie, in the <laughs> cemetery sure. where Jim Morris is buried. <laughs> um yeah. but uh anyway, so you know, we haven't we haven't been able to figure out yet what we want to do. Well, don't wait. Just do it. JFDI. You see, here's what happened. I've been saying this for years. I used to, when I wanted to go to Europe, let's say I decided I was going to go to Paris. I'd call the airline, I'd get a seat, and I'd go to Paris. And uh, before I went there, I'd call a hotel in Paris and I'd book a room. Yeah. You can't do that anymore. It's tough. I mean, I'd like to do it on a whim. Uh, you know, we could go to Paris after the Olympics are over with. You know, because there'll be rooms available. Um, mm. But, uh, you know, it, it's, it's... Are your passports up to date? Oh, yeah, my passport's up to date. That's... I've got a year on mine. I should renew it. Yeah, anything under six months, they won't let you travel, so be careful. I have to well, check mine. Well, I, I think you've got two years left. I think we looked, and you have two, two? years. Something like two, yeah. Well, mine's fairly new. I got mine renewed a couple of years ago, but you got to, that's another thing. You used to be able to go down to the passport office and <laughs> say, I need a passport. Well, when are you leaving? I'm leaving Wednesday. Well, for an extra amount of money here, we can rush it through. Yeah. Now you can't even go to a passport office. You have to mail the thing. No, you can do it all online now. Yeah, it's all online. Yeah, but you have to mail them your old passport. I had to do that. Mm -hmm. And then I also is... got something else on the passport that is uh, it's an addition now that they have that makes it easier to get through places and so yeah, on. Yeah, we, we had uh, um, global entry, and it was lovely. We walked up to this kiosk. It took a picture and said, yep, that's you. And we walked past the, everybody, and didn't, nobody asked us any questions. Was like, What's it called wow. again? Global entry. Global entry. I was number 72 when the program came out. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Really? Yeah, because I used to travel. Well, what do you, you have know, to do for global entry? Can you do it online? It's If you have a certain credit card, it's completely free. Um, it's $100 if you don't. And yes, I did it all online. But then you have to go do a uh, an in-person interview. So you can either do it when you come in the first time from out of country or go there specifically to take your interview. So. Let me so just I ask you go somewhere here in New York and talk to somebody face to face. Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you have to do an interview with them, but it, there's the, the interview stupid. It's just to it was sure so easy person. to to get into. I mean, I just you walk up to this camera and and that was it. I mean, it was nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the 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 probing they do with that at the at the office when you bend over and everything that part's a little difficult but the rest I, of the I process actually, is pretty actually kind of liked it i thought it was good yeah <laughs> at, least, at least they, at least they warm it up over. they warm it up what the high school would bend over he was a good guy benjamin coming out of italy we had to show our passport i think it was six times it was unbelievable. Every place it does stop, stop. Passport, take your picture, more passports. Like, what the hell's going on? And that was for, to leave the country. Mm. Uh, Global entry. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. If you have a Chase credit card, you get uh, you get it for free. And what was the other thing we said that you were going PSA to free? Uh what's that? There was something else, some other name you gave me to go to. Uh, uh, a reverb you, you told me about yeah, reverb yeah reverb for the microphone for microphones reverb okay <laughs> i'll write that down but like now he's got something to do this after day, there was a day when i could remember all this but i don't you you're gone i don't mm. i just don't remember things as well as i used to if it gets any hotter and you need to get another fan for your place there's a site called only fans you can go to <laughs> uh, yeah um but uh so are you doing any poetry readings at all uh francine i'm going to one after this actually where it's downtown near union square uh-huh is it a bookstore or what no it's a bar and then there's a 
a you, room in the back. Poetry in a bar? Are you in? Oh yeah, most most places that I that I go to readings are in bars in the back room. Like there's a you know the bar, and then there's a performance space where they usually do uh, you know music at mm-hmm. night. But then they have like a little couple of hours in the evening where they they let the poets come in. Do drunks even like poetry? No, what? there are no drunks. It's just other poets. Oh, it's other poets. Yeah, they may be drunks, but they're not. Okay, so now you read for other poets. Yeah, right. That's and the only people that read that like poetry. Overjudgmental, or are they forgiving? Or you know, oh, very. They're very forgiving. Everybody's it's very supportive. It's, oh, okay. um It's almost like a support group. I, I often equate it to a support group. Um, where you no, go and you, you. And when people ask you, what do you do for a living? And well, I'm a retired you, teacher. And, so. you say, and you say I'm a poet. No, I no. don't. I don't ever say because that. I the say next a question from them would be, yeah, but how do you make money? Right. That's why, that's why I don't say it because, um, well, I, I don't think of myself as mainly a poet. Like I'm, a, I'm I was a teacher, so that's that's what they ask me. They say, "What do you do for a living?" I say, "I'm a right. podcaster." And then the next question is, "What do you do for a living?" But, but <laughs> you're you are though. I mean, that's like you're. You know, that was your that's your career, you know. Well, it's always been radio has always been my career. Yeah, right, right. So a woman up there in the corner. Is she on the corner and other everybody else's thing? Marjorie mm-hmm. said to me when I bought this new mixer here. Well, how's your new toy? <laughs> and I had to tell her that's not a toy for me. That's a tool. It's an instrument. It's a toy. It's well, an instrument. Technology is is feels like toys though it does no, but but for me it's it's my it's it's i i've always had a mixer no matter where i was when toy. i started radio how, how much, how much it, more money are you going to make with that uh new mixing board <laughs> shut the hell up will you <laughs> well, let, me, let me turn up my microphone what? Nothing's what was a troublemaker and i've never liked you anyway what, <laughs> what else is new <laughs> how, how much, what was the first time you were on the air at what age did you first time you said something into a microphone for a radio show yeah when was the first time I you was, were on uh, the air? i was i was 13 wow was it announcing a blue light special on aisle seven <laughs> uh, no i was uh i i our our school if there were four schools in marin county and each school was given 15 minutes in a given hour once a week, 10 o'clock on uh, Saturdays. And so we cool. produced a 15-minute show for our high school. And that's when I first stepped in front of a microphone and talked. You so know. your voice is 70 light years away on its way out into space. <laughs> Somewhere, yeah. yeah. I've been doing this for uh, b- 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 70 years. Yeah, there you go. I can do math, too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, and, and not many people can say they've been doing it that long. No, you know, uh, I did, I, back in uh, when I lived in Louisiana for a while, um, KSMB was a rock and roll radio station that played, you know, obviously rock on 11 o'clock, no, midnight on Saturday night nights. They allowed regular people to come in and do a show. I don't know why they did it, they just did it. So our card was picked, me and my roommate when I drove to Lafayette, Louisiana. And they, we walked in, and the woman who was on the air said, okay, here's how you turn this on. Here's the records, whatever. I'm going out to smoke pot and screw with my boyfriend. You guys got the place for an hour. Have a nice time. If the red phone rings, don't answer it. Okay. <laughs> and we had an hour on the air with, completely free. It was unbelievable. It was so cool. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it was really exciting, you know, because it was a 100,000-watt radio station. This was not a uh, hundred thousand know, watt radio station. Where, yeah, where was it? Because there aren't hundred thousand watt. Well, it may, well, I think that's what it was. I feel like that's it what it had was. To be in another country, they don't have hundred thousand oh, watt then, stations. Then maybe, maybe it's ten thousand. What's what's a big FM 50, radio station? Fifty. Oh, uh, FM, so FM could be that much, but okay. FM they never used to talk in terms of watts. It was it was a big one. It served the entire Louisiana, you know, whatever. So it was, it was cool. So it was an FM station. It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, the most that you ever found with an AM station was fifty thousand watts. Mm. 
Yeah, this was FM. When you went to Mexico, there were 100,000 watt stations. And we used to get them in California at night. And that's where Wolf and Jack were. (laughs) Those Mexican radio stations. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you could get a a West Coast radio on the East Coast. Yeah. On what? Yeah. I yeah. can't AM, AM radio at night, you know. Oh, you there was a it. thing called there was a thing called a skip. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. It. And the signals would skip, and you could pick them up. I used to go to the top of Mount Tamalpais in Marin County at mm-hmm. night, just so I could sit there with my car and do what I what they call DXing, listening, <laughs> to find different radio stations. And I think I picked one up from New York one night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was not uncommon. Only mm-hmm. AM radio though, not FM. Right, right. AM had what they called a ground wave during the day and a night wave during the night. And the night wave just went really far. Yeah, we <laughs> used to listen to all the Canadian radio stations on AM across the lake as a kid. Mm-hmm. You know, they had all, all these rock bands that weren't here in the States, so you could be cool and know the names of bands nobody else knew. You know? Yeah. It's mm-hmm. great. Hey, listen, I just looked at the clock. We've run out of time. Jeez. A nice, pleasant hour this is. I look <laughs> forward to this every week, even even with a tooth hurting. <laughs> so uh, what time time when when did this start, Alex? At tooth hurty. Uh, oh. oh. <laughs> I got that from Albert, my friend Albert. <laughs> years ago. Anyway, it's great talking to all of you, Marjorie. Great having you here. What's for dinner tonight? Surprise. Oh, I'm having ravioli. Because you went out to lunch already, and then she goes out to lunch with friends, and then she says, "Well, I'm not hungry. I don't have to have." To. <laughs> I was bringing you on your own. I think is the term she uses. Yeah. Thank you, Marjorie. Uh, Charlene, you've hardly said a word today, but I was going to say, I was going to say, we at our house, it's not you're on your own. It's spend for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Totally. Andrew, thank you so much. You're very funny. I like you. Mm-hmm. And I, I, like, thanks. I like you, Francine. I like you, John Ewing. And you've hardly said anything today. But it's mm-hmm. nice to have you here, you know? Thank and you. It makes it look like I got a filled up show, too. It helps. Mm-hmm. And Jeff, of course, you're always one of my favorites. And by the way, mm-hmm. there's Edward Berger over there. And he signs us off every week by saying that's all folks bye-bye everybody have a nice week we'll see you next week bye-bye